What a wild finish in an epic ball game last night. The Packers beat the Cardinals as a gorgeous final drive results in disaster for Arizona. As Rasul Douglas picked off Tyler Murray right there to seal the deal. AJ Green never turned around. 15 seconds left. Are you kidding me? This on the heels of the Packers scoring a touchdown. And then the touchdown gets taken off the board on replay. All right, so they have the ball. They don't run it with A.J. Dillon from the one. Packers get called for delay a game. Incomplete on fourth down. Murray drives them all the way down the field. Down 24-21. Forget the field goal. Think of the score. 15 seconds to go. And then that. Wow. A wild swing in a game loaded with playoff implications and tiebreakers down the road. We keep talking about it because I'm obsessed with it. Five teams in the NFC have legit Super Bowl aspirations. Last night was huge for the Green Bay Packers. Huge for Aaron Rodgers without Devontae Adams. This team is now 7-0 without Devontae Adams since 2019. No Devontae Adams. Oh, by the way, no MVS. Oh, by the way, no Alan Lazard. But Rodgers had his bestie, Randall Cobb. And Rodgers is going to become the first person in NFL history to win MVP and Executive of the Year in back-to-back seasons. To show up at training camp, he insisted the team reacquired Randall Cobb. It was brilliant. Two touchdowns last night. Credit Rodgers for rock and steady. Credit Matt LaFleur with his game plan, running the football, controlling the clock. A.J. Dillon was a needed beast, as we predicted on Time to Shine last night. Aaron Jones, a force catching it out of the backfield. The Packers were missing key players, and they were missing their defensive coordinator on a short week. This was a gigantic win. And a reminder, it's Aaron Rodgers' world, and we're just living in it. It's going to be a bone-crushing, intense divisional showdown on CBS when the Tennessee Titans play the Colts in Indy. And I think Derrick Henry and the Titans end the Colts' chances of beating them out for the division. And that's what Leonard's talking about here, because if they can't beat Derrick Henry and the Titans, it's it's over for Indianapolis. There's, There's no coming back. It's Indy fighting and scrapping for the wild card, but they can't win the division. And spoiler alert... It's over. It's already over because Derrick Henry is an all-timer who plays his best when it matters the most in the division. Ryan Tannehill on fire. A.J. Brown is healthy and he's back to being A.J. Brown. Titans defense just clubbed Patrick Mahomes. Now, being fair, Carson Wentz truly looks great. And the Colts have clawed back after a rough start what could go wrong was going wrong for indy but the titan stamp on the division will be cemented after henry punches the colts out well i spoke to the press yesterday and took responsibility for the kansas city chiefs dreadful start and sub 500 record and that's what quarterbacks who are leaders do so no surprise there but the crazy thing is Mahomes is right. He's not playing well at all. Mahomes is turning it over rapidly and not making the possible possible, which is crazy and damning. But what's frightening for the Chiefs is it's also everything. The line is dreadful. They can't run the football at all. The defense is just pathetic. But there is good news. The Giants are coming to town on Monday night, and that feels like a recipe to get right. The Giants, exactly what the doctor ordered. This feels, for Kansas City, like it's the right opponent for a feel-good win. They need to make stops. They need to move the chains. Or, I mean, basic things to win football games. And they need Mahomes to feel like Mahomes. Look, I'm not ready to scream playoffs. The road to the postseason is going to be very tough. The Chiefs' issues are real. The competition in the division and in the landscape in the AFC, it's that good, that strong. But Mahomes knows it's on him. And I know for a week, at the end of the day, he's going to find it going up against the putrid, pathetic Giants. Nick Sirianni is not growing on me, that's for sure. Friday edition of Lover Love. Sunday will be a bouquet of flowers for the Eagles. Loathe, despise, upset special 
The rebuilding since 1957 Detroit Lions are going to get their first win of the season. So you tell me, who do you want as your head coach? Nick Sirianni, who's talking about fertilizer, flowers, and rock, paper, scissors, or Dan Campbell, who wants to fight you, drink coffee, and bite your kneecaps. Listen, Lions play hard. They play inspired ball. The roster is terrible. I'm going to take the Lions because Dan Campbell is a much better coach than Nick Sirianni. Every time he speaks, I ask myself, the hell was that? Staying in the NFL, our good friend, the great Ian Rappaport, is reporting. Baker Mayfield expected to play on Sunday for the Cleveland Browns. So, love or loathe, Baker leads the Browns to a win. Love. Listen, this is all about how much pain Baker Mayfield can tolerate. I'm on record saying I would start Case Keenum because he's 100%, and I'm not a Case Keenum truther. Anyone who thinks Case Keenum is better than Baker Mayfield is not paying attention. I do wonder about Baker being concerned about getting hit, but I just think Cleveland is vastly superior compare and contrast here. When you look at it compared to the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mayfield wants to be out there. It's a home game. I think he is much better than Ben Roethlisberger, and I think Mayfield's going to play well, rock and roll. It's important to him, and I think he's going to lead Cleveland to a win. Major League Baseball, where former A's manager Bob Melvin could have joined the San Diego Padres as their manager on a three-year deal. Love or loathe Melvin as the Padres' new skipper. I love this. This is an unbelievable hire. This came out of nowhere, very under the radar. Couldn't believe that they hired him. I mean, think about what we said for the Padres, right? They needed an adult in the room, an adult in the clubhouse to handle the personalities. And look at the resume. This is someone who gets into the postseason, which is the first step for San Diego. He is an excellent skipper. This is a home run hire. I can't wait to take the Padres to make the playoffs coming up in 2022. The most important topic of the day. We are two days away from Halloween. Love or loathe, candy corn. Love. Absolutely positively love. And I am so sick and tired of the war on candy corn, the anti-candy corn truthers, the Mike Leeches of the world who give sound bites and tweet nonstop about candy corn. Candy corn is delicious. Candy corn is fantastic. Candy corn is Halloween. Candy corn is a classic. Candy corn is a win. Now, there are better Halloween candies I'm not on Planet Delusional here. I think that's what really clowns people. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, greatest of all time. The GOAT of Halloween candy. Love Snickers. You know I didn't have a 100 grand bar until six years ago. My kids get it all the time and they trick or treat. It's phenomenal. M&M's, Hershey, they're classics. But candy corn is next. It's next. It's a top six candy for Halloween. And here's the deal when it comes to candy corn. I don't want to hear that if you eat 50 pieces of candy corn, you're getting a tummy ache. You're going to be nauseous. What kind of sicko savage eats 50 pieces of candy corn at once, okay? So that's on you. Do not slander the good name of candy corn by stuffing your face with 50 pieces at once. That's number one. Number two, it's a Halloween candy, okay? It's, it's got a niche, a niche-based Halloween candy. I am not telling you to put out candy corn for the Labor Day weekend barbecue. This is not a Christmas time treat. This is not July 4th, let's celebrate candy corn for everyone. Candy corn on Halloween. It's timeless, it's phenomenal, I love it. I'm obsessed with it, and I am sick and tired of the haters telling me, oh, they don't like the taste, they don't like the flavor. Do you not like life? Do you not like goodness? It is delicious. It is sweet. It is succulent. I will not, at the end of the day, have the good name of candy corn slander by the candy corn elite, by the Twitter tough guys. Candy corn is phenomenal, and if you don't like it, it's on you. 
Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.